Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to do an introduction to the video of Kevin, the quilter, showing his pressing technique. I just wanted to insert before he starts that I had to make a run, and so between me transferring the camera to Jennifer Muzard, who was nice enough to record, we lost the intro of his video, but I still wanted to put the technique out here for you guys. It still is all in the video. Also, if you're interested in purchasing the starch that he used, you can just go to your area Walmart and buy the starch. Also, if you're wanting to purchase the iron that he is using, I will leave an Amazon link down below. So thank you all so much for watching and supporting Kevin the Quilter on my channel. firmer as it goes through it's not flimsy and I have man hands and I don't want flimsy stuff I want it to just go on through so that's kind of why I do that they do not make this starch anymore but this was my favorite starch and I saved the bottles so this is what I do okay um, you know that I'm scrappy and I work with everything but this technique can be done with yardage it can be done with fat quarters it can be done with scraps so what I'm doing for this I cut for this particular project these little cornerstones huh. and whenever I'm going through my scraps I want everything different I needed 80 different cornerstones so whenever I'm going I will count in fives because I'm comfortable cutting five layers of fabric because I use a 60 millimeter rotary cutter all right so this is what I do when I go through I always use a towel I do not spray on my uh, pressing uh, at surface it just messes it up <laughs> so that's the reason you use the towel I use the towel because when I'm done after a few sessions of this and I was telling Suzanne I do this all the time every time before I cut okay I can wash these and and I don't care about it, okay so what I do is I get my fabric here now a lot of people are concerned well is starch going to leave you know little white flakes on it it's going to do that I turn it over. I turn it on the back side. Okay? And she was asking, do you saturate it like Kimberly Jolly from the Fat Quarter Shop? I don't. What I do is about that. Okay? Now that leaves plenty of, of starch in there. I don't press. I lay the next layer down. And I will press this. Okay? Now, if you have a bunch of wrinkles in that first piece, yeah, you probably want to do something before you spray, okay? But I have found that this works just perfect. Now, you may think, oh, well, you know, just lay the next layer. Every single time. I do. So, and I don't, and thank you for saying that because someone else was asking. I work explicitly in scraps, okay? So I am not going to wash the scraps that I receive because I'm not going to sew around everything. <laughs> but if you'll notice here, what I'm doing, I'm creating an edge. And I know that some of you may say, well, you know, some scraps are really weird shape. Well, you can usually find a straight edge on the scrap, and if you can't find one, you can make one. Okay. All right, so uh, that's what I do, and again, I had to cut 80 of these, so I just work in fives. It's very easy to make stacks of five, 10, 15, 20, you know, and then I can keep my counts because <laughs> that makes me nuts <laughs> when I lose my count. Yeah. So I'll do this here really quick. We'll get this done. Does anyone have any questions thus far? I do. Okay. So when you're done with your stack, mm -hmm. is it dry? 
Yes, oh, it okay. is because I, of the way I'm ironing. Okay. And you know, some people may say like, oh, well, you know, you're going to distort the fabric and everything like that. I've never found that to be true. You know, um, the way that I'm doing it, I'm, I'm, I'm getting quite a bit of starch off. Okay, I'm not like pouring it on like Kimberly Jolly does. You can see, then you can do this. But again, you can do this with yardage. You can do it with fat quarters. And do you see how that have a selvage in it? You can pay attention if you're getting selvages in your work. And I don't like selvages in my work, okay? So I'm gonna lay that up there and then I'll know that I can cut up on that top layer. Now, the only thing different, this is my fifth layer, all right? The only thing different that I will do is I will apply starch to this last layer, just so it gets it done, okay? And I may sit around and, you know, oh, well, I won't sit around, but I'll do something and let this sit around. But today, I'm just going <laughs> to do this. And T's like, the bottom of your iron doesn't have anything on it. And I do this all the time. And I did not clean this before I came. Okay? So, how would you do, would you do that same odd layers of yardage? I do, yeah, because whenever we were cutting kits, that's exactly what I would do. Except with that, we did 10 layers because of the acute quilt, all right? But I'm hand cutting this, so let me just show you here real quick. Tell us your point. Just stay right here. So what I do, I always work on a, on a revolving kind of mat here, and I have these handy dandy little templates that someone generously made for me. This is an inch and a half, and what I'll do, I'll find that angle down there, all right? So to me, this is not wasting fabric. Mm -hmm. These are scraps. I'm getting an inch and a half out of this. So mm -hmm. hold it down. Okay. And I know that shifted, but <laughs> I'm tall and this is a short table. Mm -hmm. hey, and then what? What I'll do is, <laughs> what I'll do is I'll just trim these other edges off. And I know that a lot of people are like, ooh, that's dangerous. Well, you don't have a ruler? No. I am he's using a, a, template. a template. He's got a template. Really? Okay. Yeah, he's got a template on top of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a okay. one and a half inch square. Yeah. And I got the eight. And so I got I'm five. Really and I'll make that good. stack there and I'll go to the next. And the next. And the next. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. What type of iron is that? This is a chi iron and I got it last Christmas and I love it. I do not put water, I do not do steam, but it stays really hot and I was telling Benita earlier, it stays hot longer than most that will turn off. Mm -hmm. So I really do like it and T introduced me. To does it turn off? It does eventually turn off, eventually. but I think it lasts longer than most. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, people. Stay blessed.